Welcome to Electron Online and here we're going to take a closer look at how to find the phase difference between two light rays that come through a double slit and join each other right here on the screen at some distance y above the central maximum when realizing the distance between the slits and the screen is L. And of course the path length difference is the key to understanding what the phase difference is when the two waves come together. First of all, we realize that the bottom ray has to travel a slightly larger distance, x2, compared to the top wave, x1. So the difference, x2 minus x1, is the exit distance traveled by the second wave compared to the first wave. Now, realizing how to calculate the extra distance, we can see that geometrically, if this is the, slit, the distance between the two slits, and the angle where the beams are directed to theta, which is equal to theta, and of course it's always confusing that I draw theta to the bottom ray and not to the top ray, but since the two slits are so close together and the screen is so far away, normally these are very, very close together, and the angle to the bottom ray and the top ray is basically the same thing. They're basically parallel to each other. So it's a slight different distance, uh, uh, extra distance traveled by the second wave compared to the first wave. The reason why we draw it like this is a lot easier to see, of course, when we draw it to small, you wouldn't be able to see any of the details. So the extra distance traveled by the second wave is defined as x2 minus x1, which is equal to the, uh, <coughs> the hypotenuse of this triangle, which is the distance between the two slits d, times the sine of the angle theta, because that will give us the opposite side to the angle, which is the extra distance traveled. Since the angles are so small, in general, theta is very small, we can say that the sine of theta is equal to the tangent of theta, which is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which is y divided by l. y is the point on the, the distance to the point on the screen of interest, where we eventually want to find the intensity of the two waves when they come together, the interference pattern and what the intensity is at that point. So here we want to find out what is the phase difference between those two. Well, we can go back to the general equation of a wave. General equation of a wave is equal to the maximum oscillation, which is E max, times the cosine of kx minus omega t. You, remind, you might remember that equation from your mechanics. And here the value, or the number k, is what we call the wave number. It's defined as 2 pi over lambda. So that is equal to the wave number. And if we multiply that times distance, we get a fraction of a phase, so to speak. And let me show you where that came from. So again, what we said before was that if the extra distance travel is equal to some fraction of wavelength, and let's say in this example, if the fraction is one quarter of a wavelength, what is the phase difference? Well, the phase difference is, can be calculated by taking the same fraction and multiplying it times 2 pi, which is a complete phase, or 360 degrees. So one quarter 2 pi is equal to pi divided by 2. And of course, that would be equal to uh, 90 degrees. So in this case, if the extra distance travels a quarter of a wavelength, the phase difference would be pi over 2, which is pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees. There would be 90 degrees out of phase, or there would be pi over 2 radians out of phase. So how do we find the phase difference using the concept of the wave number? Well, it turns out that it's actually the extra distance traveled multiplied times the wave number. That will give us the phase difference of the waves. For example, we could say that phi is equal to extra distance travel, which is simply x2 minus x1, times the, the uh, wave number, which is 2 pi over lambda. What it really comes down to it, it's the fraction of the wavelength, which is the extra distance traveled by the wavelength, that gives you the fraction of the wavelength times 2 pi, which is the exact same equation that we have over there. So let me rearrange that a little bit. We can then say that the phase difference is equal to x2 minus x1 divided by lambda times 2 pi, and this simply becomes the fraction of the wavelength that the extra distance is equal to. That would be the fraction times 2 pi, which is what we have here, the fraction times 2 pi. Now, instead of writing x2 minus x1, we could write that this is therefore equal to uh, d sine theta divided by lambda times 2 pi, or we can write it as d tangent of theta and so forth. Now here you're beginning to see that by doing this, we're beginning to see a relationship between the angle theta and the angle phi. Phi is of course the phase difference of the two ways when they come together on the screen. Theta is the angle that we, that we from the slits 
to the point on the screen were of interest. So it's this angle right here. If this angle is known, we should now be able to calculate back the phase difference using the angle as being a known quantity. In this case, what we're interested in doing, and let me get my red pen so I can box it in. Here we were interested in finding the phase difference as a function of the extra distance traveled. And then if you realize that the extra distance traveled is equal to d sine theta, we can then come up with an equation that relates theta to phi. And that we will do in the next video.